so uh, talking about this project that uh, we, I guess was featured in the video, uh, which we made recently uh, for the Passwords Canada conference, um, Kirk, who is uh, with Delta Group, is also on the line. Um, and I guess I can introduce him uh, a little bit towards the end. Um, uh, but Kirk obviously was heavily involved um, being the, the, on the client side and shepherding this project through. Uh, internally on our own team, uh, I won't take credit as being the project architect. I was involved uh, with, the, with the project, but we had a, a great team, Alicia, who was featured in the video, and also Ike, heavily involved. And then Derek, who I think is uh, sitting quietly in the background of this call, was our uh, principal in charge and, and led and oversaw the, the overall project. And then be, even though it's a small single family project, uh, and we don't typically do single family housing, we typically do larger projects. We had a full consultant team because it's being used as a prototype for some larger projects. So I do have a number of slides, but I'll be going through them relatively quickly and we'll have uh, plenty of time for questions. So um, most people on the call, or I guess everybody on the call will, will realize the compatibility between um, Passive House and Mass Timber with Passive House tackling the embodied, or sorry, the operating uh, carbon footprint and Mass Timber dealing with the embodied uh, carbon footprint footprint so that's what this project and many of our other projects set out to do um, and there's overlap in terms of how they gel or, or work well together. This particular project as I mentioned serves as a prototype for a number of larger projects that we're working on with the same client and consultant team so with Delta we're currently um, having finished uh, what we call solo or, or the Sioux Valley timber cabin that we'll be talking about. We're also working on a six or eight story, uh, sorry, an eight story mass timber uh, passive house residential project, uh, which is going to development permit at the process at the moment. And sorry, I'm just going to move my notifications because they're bugging me. And a high rise uh, project as well, uh, currently in rezoning in Vancouver. Um, the cabin itself, as mentioned, is in an off-grid location in Sioux Valley, so north of Whistler, between Whistler and Pemberton, a really remote um, and really beautiful location. Mm -hmm. So um, part of the project mandate was to celebrate its location and its beautiful area. Um, an idea of where it sits in terms of geographic and climate context. In PHVP, it's a cool temperate climate, a GT of about 90 kilokelvin hours uh, per annum. So it is a, um, it does get pretty cold in winter, not as cold as, uh, you know, further north in Canada, but still pretty cold. Um, it sits in a valley, so there's mountains on both sides. So when we look at some of the passive house metrics, we do get pe penalized by this uh, large mountain to the south. It's about a kilometer and a half uh, away, or I guess a mile for those of you who are imperially inclined, uh, and about the same distance high. So it has a significant impact. Um, the approach to the project, as Alicia had explained in the video, was, was to keep things simple. Uh, so creating a level platform, uh, raising the project off the ground, minimizing the footprint, and then building um, a mass timber enclosure and wrapping that with mineral wool and putting a shield or a shelter overneath. Um, we also aim to keep our material palace pretty simple, um, not having wet trades on site, minimum amount of materials, and also sort of that was the uh, architecture aesthetic that was sought after. Uh, so only six uh, uh, handful of materials on size. Um, programmatically, I guess, um, a, uh, um, this raised platform also has a mechanical sort of uh, sub-level, um, the only part that touched the ground, and then two levels of accommodation, um, living, uh, living and, and bedroom accommodation, and adhering to passive house principles, keeping the shape as simple as possible, and then window to wall ratios, uh, R values, etc., that everyone's familiar with. This is an idea of the floor plan layouts. Uh, I won't dwell on them, but uh, you get an idea, and I'll be talking a little bit more about uh, certain areas uh, in particular. So our mechanical um, basement, for want of a better word, uh, originally placed there because we had, being off grid, we thought we may need a composting uh, toilet. Um, but it just made sense to house things there. It did, it does impact our form factor, um, so that was a consideration. Um, these two small build, uh, portions here are, are outhouses. They're still insulated, but there's a sauna and a storage room. They're not part of the thermal uh, or passive house enclosure. Here's an idea of the finished uh, product. Um, as we go through. So just to touch briefly on the mass timber aspect, uh, as Alicia, I think, mentioned in the video, it was um, seen being in BC, it was um, uh, seen to be, a, I guess, a temple of, of Douglas fir and celebrate uh, wood and mass timber. And um, it 
with that comes the carbon uh, footprint um, or be positive benefits associated with that. So managing to reduce the embodied carbon within the structure and then also sequester or store uh, carbon over the lifetime of the project. Um, and part of that, reducing the material palace, uh, you know, using the structure and finish as one, not having drywall or anything in addition. There's a variety of types of mass timber in the project. So the main floor structure is uh, NLT or nail laminated timber and the walls and roof uh, is uh, DLT or dowel laminated timber. And then the main floor or second uh, level floor is CLT or cross laminated timber. And then we do have an outer, um, I guess what we refer to as a shield in the drawings that are glue lamb beam and uh, columns. So that creates this idea of, uh, I guess, the, the, the um, just using mass timber in its, its, and timber in its purer form. Uh, a couple of things you'll notice, uh, apart from all the timber in this video, is, um, I guess, trying concealing services. When you are exposing that much timber, you have to pay particular attention. It is a, um, and I guess this was particularly coming from, uh, I remember Derek saying this, you know, we do have to sprinkler these buildings, even if it's a part nine building. So there is sprinklers in this building. So how do we conceal that? Uh, you know, stuff like the ventilation shafts are concealed. And um, so you really have to pay attention to that level of detail. Um, large windows um, to the south to let in or maximize winter solar gain. So these are up to win windows and the, the window behind uh, where this photo is taken is a RICO curtain wall, both uh, Passive House certified. Um, uh, you might ask, how can you get away with a double height space in a Passive House build building, particularly a part nine building? Um, you can't. Um, and the reason why we can get away in this building is, and we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, is uh, this building achieved Passive House low, PHI low energy certification. So it missed the 15 kilowatt hour target for space heating, primarily due to the mountain to the south. Um, and as we were treading that line on and off for 15, um, we had to decide if we were going all the way or if we wanted to reintroduce stuff like the double light space and the glazing to the northeast. We still wanted to go go through and uh, certify and adhere or follow through with the third party certification as we see that as being important. And um, so this is a snapshot from the PHPP model uh, or at least a, a plug to PHPP. So you can see the heating demand consistently hovered about 18 to 22 kilowatt hours per annum, primarily driven in a single family building. You want your solar gains to be higher than your window losses. Um, and we were always fighting the lack of solar gains due to the mountain to the south. Uh, we went through and we'll look at a little bit more detail, modeling all the thermal bridges. We have thick envelope enclosures, so you get negative psi values. So that becomes a benefit. And um, we could look at reducing our window losses. So eliminating or reducing this large northeast facing window, uh, filling in the double height space. Um, but we were still just on that line at around 15 or 16 kilowatt hours. We could never get our, our solar gain to, to increase. Um, uh, so that was sort of a, it's that overlap between design and, and performance. Sometimes the two go in hand in hand and sometimes uh, they're a little bit uh, divergent. And um, so what we looked at in order to hit the full certification, we're filling in the double height space, removing or reducing that northeast glazing and um, rotating the building is slightly off south oriented to the valley. So we could reorient this a little bit more due south. Uh, we could tweak specifications like in PHVP, you can change what's called the wind pro, uh, coefficient. Uh, we looked at vacuum glazing, quad glazing. We could ask this, uh, the tradesperson or the, the contractor was quite experienced. So we could ask them to hit a lower air tightness value, look at better window installs, etc. We We looked through these at, at various times um, and it seemed to be chasing just a little bit diminishing returns. We could never get down comfortably say within 10 or 12 kilowatt hours where you would want to be really going on site. Uh, uh, which is maybe somewhat unfortunate for the project because if we were within that range we would probably comfortably comfortab comfortably have been a passive house plus uh, project given the amount of pv but we're still uh, happy and, and delighted to have a uh, passive house uh, low energy certification as part of the process we do we have internal research grants one of them we used for trying to find a way to export from revit through um, various programs to guess a um, more automated system for developing thermal bridging. Anyone who's used Term, um, and I know there's better programs now, but at the time Term was the only thing really freely available. It's a, it's a nightmare to use. So we were spitting it out of Revit into Rhino using Grasshopper and and trying to get our psi values. But that we do we did model and get the benefit of all our negative psi values with our large uh, envelope corners, etc. So these are the three main sort of performance. Um, 
blockers, I guess, uh, the mountain sol solar gains. So we model this in different ways, again, in Rhino and Grasshopper, our certifier modeled it during, using um, design pH. Um, you can model it in PHPP just with a flat horizon line, uh, but there was no overcoming the fact that it was, uh, it was there. Um, and again, the double height space and uh, glazing are more design decisions that uh, sort of ebb and flow. You can push them all the way towards the performance uh, uh, dial or towards the, I guess, more architecture uh, um, dial to, to see where, where you land. And this is where we end up. Um, and in addition to being a single family house, the mandate from the client was to have somewhere to bring um, their own clients or to host like networking events as well. So this central space is quite important. <coughs> excuse me, important from their uh, viewpoint. And Kirk can maybe talk a little bit about that. So we achieved our certification. This is the first uh, Passive House certification within Perkins and Will. Uh, we have a number of other projects uh, on, the, on the go at the moment. So that's an important milestone for us. Excuse me, so just take a very quick drink. Sorry. I better speed up a little bit. Uh, so just getting a little bit more into uh, systems, it's, we saw, saw in the video, the PV panels. So the south facade, instead of having a rain screen cladding has a PV system that generates um, electricity on site. It's mounted vertically. Uh, it, you lose a bit of efficiency having it mounted virtually because of the snow, but because of the snow load, um, if you put it on the roof, you'd have to clean it off. And being an off-grid house, that's maybe not the most practical. So uh, we took the efficiency hit and mounted it vertically. And it means you don't need a cladding. This is an idea of some of the detailing at that level. So the grid is uh, set out based on mass timber CLT panel modules and the stroller panel module. And you can see the of the air tightness, the thickness of the assembly how the window is installed. Um, you can see some service uh, routing left for say sprinkler lines and uh, additional stuff like that. I'm not gonna dwell too much. Um, but I, the, the finish I guess in the end is nice and clean. Um, uh, this is an idea, these are shop drawings from BC Passive House who fabricated it. So um, because it's a pretty small project, I guess there is a, they did have to plug in a lot of gaps between the panels. So you get an idea there. This is an idea of erection. Their factory is just up the road uh, in Pemberton. Um, and because of the weather, I guess we, we didn't really want to be on site in winter. Uh, so their the prefabrication uh, nature of the project helped it to be assembled pretty quickly on site. Uh, I talked about the systems in the video, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that. Uh, we have the typical HRV, we to drill a well, we have a ground source heat pump feeding the radiant underfloor system, um, and then the battery, uh, the PV is tied to a battery pack, um, which there's always an overlap with an off-grid system. Uh, are you aiming for peak or average use? If you go for average use, it's less expensive, but then you have to make up the balance. Uh, so that then is where the hydrogen fuel cell come, come into play. Um, you need somewhere to, to put them. Uh, so Derek and Ike designed what's probably the most beautiful shed, um, a nice sort of outhouse to, ho to house all the uh, systems that are associated with it. So the hydrogen fuel cell and the battery packs uh, sit in there. So that means the project itself is emissions free. There's no combustion on site um, and no greenhouse gas in, in operation. Um, so I'm conscious of time, Zach. Am I okay to keep going? I'm just, I don't have too much more, but I'm just going to uh, roll through. Oh, thanks for asking. Yes, please do. Okay, okay. So just a couple of lessons learned as we scaled up um, before we, we wrap up with questions and answers. Um, so as we move it, look into the larger projects, there's a couple of lessons learned for us internally uh, in terms of our systems, um, in terms of our processes and just uh, design. Um, so this is an idea of the six story project. This is in uh, West Vancouver. Um, and this is then in downtown Vancouver uh, undergoing rezoning. Uh, we're looking at, in terms of energy systems, can we scale up the idea of PV panels, batteries and hydrogen as a system? Anyone who attended the PHI conference um, might have seen a German manufacturer or system that has all these packaged in one where the the surplus from the batteries actually goes into the electrolysis of the, the hydrogen, which is quite interesting because our experience maybe on this, it wasn't quite as streamlined because these are all coming from different manufacturers and then quite always talk to each other. So that's a consideration. Um, but can that be scaled up? Uh, a project typically has a backup uh, diesel generator. And this is more of a, a thought experiment we're just looking at at the moment without, um, we haven't necessarily gone too much down the line, but there is some, I've come across some, uh, research as we get into low carbon grids that rely on renewable electricity that buildings become what they call prosumers as sort of a safety valve to both produce and store um, electricity so I'm not going to dwell on this but uh, we have a, a we're looking into this in a little bit more detail at a larger scale 
um, in terms of our internal modeling process. Uh, we have a large student housing uh, project at the moment that RDH are our external consultants and passive house modelers on. The Sioux Valley, we did our own internal PHVP. So there's a balance there between whether that scope is internal or external. There's benefits to both. For Bellevue, we're uh, early stage at least doing the internal mod modeling to validate our design decisions. Um, we work a lot with Revis and Rhino. So we're trying to figure out, is there a way to implement uh, PHVP into some of that processes? And we have quite um, extensive um, computational modeling processes um, at the moment using Rhino and Grasshopper. So trying to plug PHVP into that. Uh, and others have done, like Ed May, who presented on this at the conference uh, recently, uh, has done work on this. So we're, we're looking at that at the moment, um, which would help just our internal process. And then just structure. Um, I touched briefly, Glattman were uh, structured engineers. Um, uh, this was a gravity bearing, sort of just CLT panel and bearing walls. As you get larger, uh, there's some different considerations. You move to a panel and post for mid rise, and then a panel and beam, um, or a beam, a post and beam within film panels as you move to larger uh, buildings. So that just comes with different sort of uh, dimensions for grid layouts um, and sort of structural decisions as well. Um, we're doing mock-ups for the larger buildings on uh, cladding uh, and also on, sorry, on um, uh, thermally broken timber high-rise balconies as well. So this is in process too. Um, but then for a passive house building, it just comes back to the environment and then the comfortable indoor environment. And I think that's what essentially what you're getting regardless of the scale. So that's what uh, I think everybody is after. Uh, so, and, you know, particularly in, in where we are, we just wanted to celebrate uh, the place and have a nice, comfortable sort of environment to, to enjoy where we are. So, and I think hopefully that's what the project has resulted in. So I think um, from there, I think we can wrap up and uh, move on to any questions or comments. Uh, I'll also, I guess, welcome Kirk, who is uh, 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 with Delta and was uh, our client on the project. So